Happy St. Patrick's Day London. My name is Georgie Barrett and welcome to LCC TV in Focus, broadcasting live from here in Elephant and Castle. Now today in the show we'll be taking a walk around London from the charming Postman's Park to London's oldest Irish pub, the Tipperary. Also in the studio, two members of the art collective Voy will be coming in for a chat, telling us about what they are up to. And at the end of the show we will have a live performance from M Winter. But first of all, Rachel headed down to Postman's Park to find out the story behind some incredible tributes. Here, tucked away a short walk from St Paul's, is Postman's Park, a special timepiece unheard of in comparison to the nearby famous cathedral. This small park acquired its name due to its popularity with local postmen, and some may recognise it from the BAFTA-winning film Closer, starring Julia Roberts and Jude Law. But amongst the blooming flower beds and scenic fountains stands the memorial to heroic self-sacrifice, which contains 54 ceramic tiles, each commemorating heroic men and women who have sacrificed their lives attempting to save others. The idea was proposed by Victorian painter and philanthropist George Frederick Watts, who felt it would be a fitting way to commemorate Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. The memorial was first unveiled in 1900 with four original plaques and since then 50 more have been added to the wall. One of the first is a testament to the true loyalty of Mary Rogers, a stewardess on the SS Stella. She gave up her life belt to a passenger when the ship was sinking and voluntarily went down in the ship. What's really interesting to me is that these stories represent the courage and bravery of everyday people, which is a stark contrast to the heroic acts of the royal and the noble that we're so used to seeing in London's galleries and exhibitions. These are truly fascinating accounts of that basic human instinct to nurture and protect, and they're now immortalised here in this touching memorial which is accessible to everyone. Wow, what inspiring stories. Well, keeping with the theme, I'm joined now by two people from the Voy Collective. Um, welcome to the show, guys. Tell me, what is Voy Collective about? It's an art collective. Well, Voy is an art collective based in London. It's 10 artists that practice multimedia art, and we started off in October, and this is where we are now. Amazing. So you're, it's quite newly formed. Why did you decide to go about forming it? We felt like there was too much competition in the art world and the creative industry. So rather than trying to compete and try to be better than each other. We wanted to work as a collective and work all together and combine our creativity. Amazing. And you guys are still students, that's right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And is there a reason why you decided to do this collective whilst yeah. being students still? Because we feel like students are waiting to graduate to in order to get into the industry. We wanted to try to get into the industry now, prior to our graduation. So when we graduate, we uh, will have an experience in the industry. Yeah. And getting to the industry you have, we've got some of your work here, which looks incredible. Um, huge amount of diversity going on here, well isn't definitely. it? Definitely. We start off from like graphic design to fine art photography to film and television. Yeah. Like we embrace all practices in the art environment. Yeah. Amazing. And what's the future hold? What can we look forward to? Exhibitions and in more London. events. At yeah. the moment, we are collaborating with another collective, and we're organising a music and art festival. Amazing, amazing. Well, best of luck with everything. We'll definitely look out for e everything on there. And if you do want to check out Voy's work, head over to their Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Voy. And of course, you can also head to their website, which is coming soon, isn't it? Yeah. Voycollective.co.uk. Anyway, so what are you doing tonight? If you don't have any plans, then the iconic pub might tempt you. Let's have a fresh pint with Dave at the Tipperary. Dave, what are you up to? St Patrick's Day coming up. A visit to a traditional Irish pub is an absolute must. There's no better way than coming here. The very first Irish pub in London and the first place ever to sell Guinness outside of Ireland. Right here on Fleet Street. Let's go have a look. The Tipperary was originally built on the site of a monastery in the 1300s where monks brewed ale. However, it wasn't until the 1700s, after withstanding the Great Fire of London, that it acquired its Irish heritage. Pint Guinness, please, Steve. Not 
<laughs> St. Patrick's Day commemorates the patron saint of Ireland, the bringing of Christianity to Ireland, and a celebration of Irish culture in general. The whole festival is usually typified by stuff like festivals, parades wearing a green and shamrock. Now, in the middle of St. Patrick's Day, the Lenten restrictions on eating and drinking are uplifted, are withheld, so this is where it is typically related to alcohol consumption like Steve has shown us here. Lovely pint Guinness, Steve. Look at that. All in one. Thank you, my friend. So, Steve joins me here. He's the manager. Steve, what is so special about this pub? Well, this pub's been here for many, many years, over 400 years, and it's the first pub in England to serve draft and bottle Guinness from Ireland back in the 1700s. Wow. So, we get a lot of following through that. It's wow. the only pub in England to do this. Do you get a lot of people from like overseas? Yeah, we get a hell of a lot of tourists. We get Americans, Canadians, wow. Russians, French, Japanese. They all come to the Tipperary because of literally the historic value of the place. That's incredible. So the big one, St. Patrick's Day coming up, that must be huge for uh, you. It's a big day for us. We do 20 barrels of Guinness in one day, which is calculated to over 2,000 points. <laughs> uh, we do Irish stew, boiled bacon and cabbage, we get homemade pies, we do champagne and oysters, Guinness and oysters, we oh. do everything. And we have live music from 6 o'clock till 9 o'clock. 6 till 9. Yeah. So come here, spend the entire day here, St. Patrick's Day at the Tipperary. Thank you very much. It's going to be a big one. What a charming place. I would definitely be heading down there tonight. Well, let's kick off celebrations right away because joining me now is singer-songwriter from Sweden, M. Winter. And welcome to the show. What are you going to be playing us out? An original, What Have You Done To Me? Wow, we'll look forward to that. If you do want to check out more of M's music, you should he head over to her SoundCloud forward slash M, uh, M. Winter. Um, now, I'll leave you to play. That's all from me for today. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Have a great one. Take it away, M. <laughs> Help me out This is too much to bear I don't think I have the strength To go through this I was told before It will hurt like hell There will be no words Tell how much it hurts So look at me now Time there's a chance that I forget how to breathe. Oh, love. What have you done to me? I was born to be free like a strong man. Oh, love. Oh, love. Oh, love. What have you done? no way out of here just once you can see there's no way you can go back and I'll see you so please help me out to ease this pain I could sure use a hand to go through you done to me I was born to be free like a strong man oh love oh love oh love what have you done to me what have you done to me <laughs>